I knew I couldn't continue without some proper nourishment. Even though this could be my last meal, I didn't care enough to treat myself to some juicy steak or a homemade cherry pie that I loved as a kid. No, it was just me and that bowl of cornflakes. Felt like something a person on death row would order as a last meal. And I immediately regretted it. Knowing it's far too late to change this order, and I will leave this world with just- Could you shut the fuck up? I'm trying to eat breakfast! And this is Fruity Pebbles! I fucking love Fruity Pebbles! You don't need to narrate everything that I'm doing! I've always had self-confidence issues. Oh, for fuck's sake! After nine long years, we finally have another Max Payne. The original was one of my favorite third-person shooters back on the Xbox. It had this real mature, deep storyline, and of course, it's really unique and satisfying bullet time mechanic. So this year, the story continues with the Max being a broken, run-down man. A shell of his former days. Between his addiction to painkillers and alcohol, he is haunted by the tragedies that occurred in the last two games. Destined to live out the rest of his life at the bottom of a bottle, he is given a opportunity by the new character, Passos. Now, Passos offers Max a job. And after a little bit of a misunderstanding with the local mob boss's son... You spray tan Guido douche! What you Girl, sure, I had balls. I had to give her that. <laughs> oh, shit! I don't know why I did it. I guess I never liked seeing girls get hit. Max takes up Paso's offer, narrowly escaping the mob's retribution. You killed my son. You killed my fucking son. Listen, I'm sorry. Fuck you! Sorry for your loss. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! No! He then becomes a bodyguard for a rich and powerful family in Brazil. But it's just from one boiling pot to the next. But at least this one has a nicer change in scenery. <laughs> That's very funny, Max. Hey, soldier! Oh. Oh, I gotta quit drinking so much. Till it all goes to shit, that is. Now most of your allies and enemies speak Portuguese, which further adds to this feeling that Max is disconnected from his world, trying to make his way back to it. The game has plenty of cutscenes, which deepens the characters and gives more context to the gun battles that you'll be in. And with its excellent voice acting and cinematic direction, it really plays out like a good movie, which is uh, more than I can say for some. I was drawn in a feeling for Max as the world just literally crumbled around him. And trust me, I know the feeling. I knew these motherfuckers watching me wouldn't let me rest. 
they'd have another shitty movie license game or connect game waiting for me after this review. Well, fuck that shit. I'm not gonna take it anymore. I'll kill you all! Like I said, the game is extremely thematic. And the only thing that took me out of it was those really fucking annoying video feedback effects. I felt like a fool. I was a sweaty, gray-haired mess. This place, well, this place was gonna kill me too. I could see that now. I guess it's supposed to represent his disorientation from drinking and from pills, but it was just way overused. Now, I just love Rockstar because of their attention to detail. And since this isn't an open world game, they were able to pack it with even more detail. The graphics look great. The environments are beautiful and varied. All of them with a very large scale feeling. Seeing Sao Paulo in the distance and then actually visiting the streets of it was an interesting venture. I had stumbled into some kind of street party. This was the kind of reality Americans paid top dollar to see. The attention to small things really pays off. The way Max Payne holds his weapons in, in either of his hands or in his holsters. Or he carries the assault rifle in one hand and that carries over into the cutscenes. You see individual shell casings firing off, pipes bursting, glass shattering, and hell there's a really fun office level where it's, where it's just a playground where you get to fuck shit up. And what's great about Max Payne 3 is that it still manages to stay true to the older games in this series while offering something fresh. The action is always intense. You and your partner Passos are almost always hopelessly outnumbered. But it gives you the opportunity to use uh, the mechanic that we all play Max Payne for. Of course, the slow-mo bullet time. <laughs> <laughs> been my favorite feature. Max's life is depicted by a small figure that fills red with damage. Now popping pills in combat will clear that damage as well as a last stand kill. Now this is where just at the brink of death your slow-mo will automatically kick in giving you one last chance to shoot back at your attacker. If you hit him you gain a small amount of health back which will save your ass a ton. Now a meter on the side of the figure fills to tell you how much bullet time you actually have. And don't be afraid to hide behind cover because this meter fills as you take shots and give shots. And you're gonna want that because in this game, you're gonna die. A lot. This game is hard if only because a single well-placed bullet can take you out. It's frustrating at times, yes, but it's just like real life, especially when you're fighting a, a drug lord army by yourself. Those last three levels, oh my fucking god, they really stack the odds against you with enemies in full body armor with badass weapons while you're just simply there nursing your low ammo with your crappy pistol. Oh yeah, what up, bitches? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Oh, you want some more? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What? What the? What the? 
I want to die! Stay down! What the? You little shit! Mmm! 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 Eat it in the neck! Mm, mm, mm. Look what you made me do, much with waste all my ammo! Now the single player is a good length. It is 12 hours long, more if you're trying to collect the uh, story-centric clues, uh, achieve some certain bonus achievements in the game, and collecting parts for a golden gun version of whatever your favorite gun is. Now I could just stop right here and rate the game. But I think one of the best parts about this game is that it doesn't stop right here. Max Payne 3 has multiplayer, and this isn't just some tacked on afterthought mode. No, it's a fully fleshed out feature set with unique modes, progression unlocks, and character customization. Hell, you can even create your own gang or crew, which will track the stats of you and all your crew members, allows you to feud with other gangs, create your own unique logo, and eventually import this crew or gang into Grand Theft Auto V. How cool is that shit? And it doesn't stop there, this game is packed with extras. Like getting to see how many times you were shot and where at your body you were shot or shot other people. Tons of stats and even a vendetta mode where if the same freaking person keeps killing you, you can put a bounty on that little motherfucker's head that other players will collect and shoot the shit out of him. I've always wanted that mode. And you guys know you've had your little arch enemies in, in online games that you want to take down. Yeah, how'd you like being my bitch, Angry Joe? <laughs> That's what you get, you and your army? You don't mess with me and my crew, the cash whores. <laughs> I cannot be beat. Well, God, don't you knock, you idiot. Did you get the useless DLC ready? Good, now fuck off. Me and Wahlberg are kicking Joe's ass. Sorry about that, Mark. Now where were we? And of course, since it's a Max Payne game, they even found a way to include bullet time in multiplayer with a positive effect for the activator and a negative effect for everybody who that activator can then see. It's a fantastic addition and something unique to this game that needs to be played. Plus, it can make for some pretty funny screw-ups. Now, including multiplayer like that in a triple-A single-player game like this takes our final verdict for Max Payne 3 to an 8 out of 10. Damn near 9 out of 10. If only it wasn't slightly repetitive, loses a little bit of steam at the end. If only there were more, you know, surreal moments like that nightmarish dream kind of sequences that can break up these shooting gallery segments which pretty much make up the entire game. The story lacks some of that emotion that we all felt during the first Max Payne. But what it does earn though, easily, is a badass seal of approval. That's my personal recommendation to go out and buy this game. You will not regret it. In fact, since it's been about two months since its release, you can pick it up for $40 or less. Especially if it's on sale. Because it is worth every penny of its full retail price, even $60. So pick it up. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Hello. Ah! <laughs> 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 <laughs>